Have you ever dated someone you worked with? What? What? These are real stories. All right, twofold here, Doug. Does that mean that Republicans seem to be defending the actual substance of the phone call? They fired the first shot two seconds after they arrived. That's not enough time, as they said in the statement, which was presented to the grand jury, Charlie, right. to tell this 12-year-old boy, put your hands up, put the weapon down. What do you say to people like that who feel like they're in the middle, but really also feel like there are real-life decisions that are hanging in the balance here? Welcome back. Thousands of Spirit Airline passengers were left stranded at Metro Airport over the weekend. The airline canceled hundreds of flights nationwide. There hadn't been explosions for uh, at least an hour and a half. There were propane tanks inside, pallets inside. We are seeing pictures here in the ground. You think about the fact that this is someone's life now just completely destroyed. He took off running. And he was going to rape her in broad daylight in front of her baby? Exactly. Leave. It's a gas station. Did you guys have illegal drugs? What does Pastor Mo have to say or do to end the threats against his church, against his life, and against his family? Mario, Why not you, being friends and understanding See, this man's heart and where he's you. been, thank why you, not Mario. you put the call out for thank this to stop? I'm just asking. A young Detroit girl is recognized by the White House for her creativity. If you don't, wash your chicken. I just want to say, you're nasty. <laughs> okay? I said it. Um, I had a great conversation <laughs> with Pastor John Gray. Um, we spoke about changing the way that we worship because that's really what many people have had to do during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. In SportsWorks this morning, the Lions will take the field for the first preseason game. We've been waiting for this, Jay. This is happening a week from Friday against the Buffalo Bills. Are we going? Yes, All let's right. do it. Now, I'm doing this in heels. Yeah. Is that advised? Uh, normally, flat-footed would give you better support because we want to oh. ground um, but ourselves. Cute, right? But you absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay. So point that arrow at the bottom third. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try one here. Well, it used to be a staple at Home Depot, those delicious hot dog stands at the exits. It's the only reason I was going to Home Depot. Right. Depot, Jay. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> um, I would like to tell you, um, Old Mission Peninsula is here in yes, this it is. area. Yes, it is. Right around here. Yeah. The, you could go up a little. The Traverse City would be. I don't know what you guys are doing. Enough. This is it's hand maps. Enough. I need to learn how to read those. <laughs> right here. Just, what is that? Awesome. Sounds great. Well, hey, Nick, thank you so much for coming on out. We really appreciate this. And listen, Marielle and I, we are ready to go. Eh? Yeah, well, my food left first, so I guess <laughs> we can go now. Quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah. I cannot get this done. So, again, one finger points to the thumb, the thumbs up, then you just switch. I, I, I do it slow. <laughs> I can't do it. Is anybody having any luck? But it doesn't matter what the weather is. Breast cancer is something that affects so many people, touches so many families, and that's why it's important for everyone to be down here today. <laughs> All right, guys, let's start right here with what's trending. Good morning to you at home. That praying mantis had the best seat in the house. Are you yeah. Ready for this? No, I'm not. Listen, I have heels uh, on. Yeah, I do Please, too. Take oh, note of that. These excuses, are heels. Excuses. Excuses. <laughs> These are heels. It, it's Mario on the lead. Come on, Charlie. Oh! Photo finish! <laughs> you guys look. I love that. Hello. <laughs> nice. I'm Maria Lou. Good morning to you. Good morning to you at home as well. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Jay, we have a busy show this mm -hmm. hour. We'll start right here. Team USA gymnast Simone Biles shocking the sports world all over again. This day after day, these things in the headlines. She's withdrawing from another event at the Tokyo Olympics. She won't defend her gold medal in the individual all-around competition, instead taking time to focus on her own mental health, her own well-being. We'll have more on her future at the Games. Kate Nye not only breaking barriers for women and weightlifting, but also when it comes to battling mental health. Here's Fox 2's Taryn Asher with more on her triumph in Tokyo. It was insane. I woke up at 6.50 in the morning. All right, Camille, thank you. In the news now, a four-year-old girl remains hospitalized this morning after an apparent accidental shooting. So here's what happened. Police say the girl found an unsecured, loaded gun inside her family's apartment and accidentally shot herself. We are told the girl was with her father at the time. And he rushed her to the hospital where she underwent surgery. Police were originally told the girl was shot at Harris Park on Shane, north of Jefferson. 
but that was not the case. This morning, the investigation still ongoing. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announcing a new federal ban on evictions through October 3rd. The previous eviction moratorium expired last Saturday. The Biden administration had said that it lacked legal authority to extend the ban after a Supreme Court ruling in July. But the new ban applies to regions of the country with high transmission rates of COVID-19. So far, it's not clear if any areas in Michigan would be included. Welcome back. Thousands of Spirit Airline passengers were left stranded at Metro Airport over the weekend. The airline canceled hundreds of flights nationwide. Spirit blames weather and operational challenges. Uh, the airline says it understands that people are frustrated and it's working to find a solution right now to get people to their destination safely. But passengers aren't buying it. To that you say what? Kiss my I'm never flying with you again. Well, Spirit is asking passengers to check flight schedules and emails before even coming to the airport. The airline says the delays have nothing to do with the rumored labor strike. Meanwhile, American and Southwest Airlines have also canceled or delayed hundreds of flights since Sunday. They also cite weather as the reason. But coming up in HealthWorks, potential heart inflammation in young people linked to the Pfizer COVID vaccine. We'll tell you what a new study has found about the risk that's coming up. The diagnosis came as a surprise because I've been very careful. I've been taking this virus seriously, working from home for more than a year, almost no social life, ordering all my groceries online and always wearing a mask. So however I got it, the interaction was brief. A protocol says you have to quarantine at home for 10 days, and I was doing that. I was just a day and a half away from being in the clear before everything changed. Oh, that's a lot better. Yes, thank you. You never get used to the joint pain. White, hot bolts of raw torture shocking your body with no warning, day and night. Whoever said lightning never strikes the same place twice, obviously never had COVID. I tested positive three days before my birthday in late March. Minus the achy fatigue and shortness of breath, my symptoms were pretty mild at first. I quarantined at home for more than a week with little more than some orange juice, cold medicine, and a pulse oximeter to measure my blood oxygen level. Is that a smile? Is that a doggy smile? <laughs> I kept my viewers up to date on my progress, and then my fever started to spike, and as it neared 104, I started to hallucinate. If you're at home, can you walk from the bedroom to the kitchen without getting super winded and have to, having to take a break? If you're young and you're healthy, and you can't make it from your bedroom to the kitchen, that might be a big deal. Day eight, symptom swap. My lungs seemed to be clearing up, but suddenly a debilitating fever and a headache. I couldn't even get out of bed. I remember thinking, ought the fever waited until now? The new variant, it's, it's very different, I feel like, in my opinion, in regards to successful rates of getting patients quicker out of the hospital. You know, that day 10, 11 is really kicking them really hard. Hi, everybody. This is day 10 of COVID I'm in the hospital right now. What I'm about to do is extremely hard. The exercise is to just simply roll over on my side and try to breathe. I've been trying it. It's very hard. Here we go. Arms up so you get air into your lungs. Okay, I'm gonna grab it with this one. Proning, you know, even you, when you start proning, laying on your belly, you know, laying on your side, you can't just do it for one hour, two hours. We need you to do it for 14, 15, 16 hours, and you're fighting, yeah. you know, and it's hard. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that was hard for you. I got, I knew that was gonna be hard, so I went ahead and got a cloth with ice, cause it kind of spikes my fever when I uh, exert too much energy, but I want you guys to see that this is not a game. I'm young, 25, would you believe that? And um, I shouldn't be here. It already 
tell me they're keeping me another night. Between the poking, proning, and the bruising, the next five days would be the hardest of my life, but there was a bright spot. I feel like, you know, walking to that room, God was definitely with us. And it was at that moment where we connected. Your struggle was real in the hospital. Your fear was real. And it wasn't, it wasn't, um, your feelings were valid, you know? Everything was real. You weren't yeah. just one of those patients that were sitting there on oxygen and fine and can walk up and use the bathroom with no problem. No, you, you could, you were struggling. Jennifer Hanash is a respiratory therapist with Ascension Providence, a crucial part of any healthcare team, especially now. In critical cases, COVID attacks the lining of the air sacs in the lungs. And as the body tries to fight it, your lungs could swell and fill with fluid. When I first walked in, you were scared to even talk to me. I felt like, you know, you were scared to tell me what you wanted. And you even made a comment saying, you know, can you, I know this is not your job, but can you do this? And that breaks my heart because you are my job. I will do whatever you need. Her job is to keep my lungs clear and my airways open. She did that, but she also kept my mind clear and my heart open. She brought me this. Purple's my favorite color. Beautiful notebook for no reason. I, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff, but she brought me this for no reason. And then she brought me this. Keep calm and trust God. Your mind will take over your body and that is your worst enemy. I was most afraid at night, thinking I might roll onto my back while I was sleeping and worsen my condition. I was not prepared for the mental component of COVID. That was one of the most difficult obstacles to overcome. But I was reminded I wasn't fighting alone. Say get well. Get well. Get well. Get well soon, Mario. When I walk out that room, I don't know if I'm gonna see you again. So I have to do something. I have to say something. I have to make sure that you feel loved and bring love back into the room. Yay! <laughs> I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, it's my new best friend. You know, your room was filled with flowers, bears. I mean, the love was, I mean, unbelievable. When the news broke, Fox 2 viewers flooded the hospital with flowers, notes, and well wishes. So many, in fact, that hospital staff asked to change my name to Sunflower to protect my privacy, and so they could get back to work. But your kindness continued. I want to make sure I can say thank you to everyone. I mean, honestly, I, I don't even know what to do with a lot of this. It's so incredible. And it, that's probably not a delivery. All right, thank you. <laughs> oh, you guys are amazing. I'm glad to be home, but that's not the end of the story. It was a week before I could climb my own stairs. For some, getting out of the hospital is just the beginning. People come and tell me, you know, I'm reading the same paragraph over and over again. It's hard for me to retain what I used oh to retain gosh. before COVID. So there's, there, I can't think of too many jobs that if you have some long COVID symptoms that you would be able to do. If you have to put any amount of focus or effort or talking or breathing, it could be very taxing on you if you have some of those prolonged COVID symptoms. I also have double pneumonia and a nighttime confusion. COVID survivors have to wait 90 days before getting the vaccine. Having the antibodies is not the same as having immunity. If you wait, you could, it could be at your own peril. COVID can lead to scarring and damage to your lungs. If you get it again, you're gonna have more scarring and more damage to your lungs. So your second case can be a lot more severe. So for those reasons, I'm recommending that you get that. I'm still dealing with a list of long hauler symptoms. Recovering from COVID is certainly a journey in itself, physically, spiritually, and mentally. Healthcare professionals have worked around the clock tirelessly to keep us safe. And for that, we are grateful. And to my doctors, Dr. Dooley, Dr. Siva Kumar, and my own guardian angel, Jennifer Hamash, I say thank you. It's because of you I can say alive to tell the story. I'm Marielle Liu, Fox 2 News.